Hello everybody, my name is Arndt Königke. I'm a professor for public law and politics at the Federal University of Applied Sciences for Public Administration in Brühl in Germany. I would like to give you a short survey about the restrictions of fundamental rights in Germany in times of Corona. At the beginning of its outbreak, the coronavirus seemed to be far away and solely a Chinese problem. By the time the virus found its way to Europe and spread across all our countries. Latest from March 2020 on, most of us felt the impact of Corona in our lives, our business life as well as our private life. Restrictive measures set by the governments affected our daily routine. This is the impact all of us experienced. Lockdowns, social distancing and wearing masks became our new reality. At the beginning, most of us accepted this new reality without major complaints. However, by the time more and more people noticed that many of these measures implemented to contain the coronavirus pandemic also restricted fundamental rights. Let me therefore focus on the restriction of fundamental rights in my country, here in Germany, in times of corona, and discuss the legal impact corona had on our fundamental rights in Germany. First of all, it is important to remind you of the fact that Germany is organized as a federal state. That means that the competences are divided between the federation and the 16 states, or as we call them, Länder. The principle is that all competences remain with the federal states unless they are transferred to the federation in our basic law of the German constitution. Protection against infection is the subject of competing legislation under Article 74, first paragraph number 19 of the Basic Law. This means that the federal states can only enact their own laws as long as and to the extent that the federation has not itself enacted a law. In July 2000, the federal parliament has exercised the legislative competence by enacting the Protection Against Infection Act. This act, which was latest amended in June 2020, also serves as the legal basis for the individual measures in the case of the corona pandemic. However, not the Federation, but the 16 federal states decide which measures are actually taken. The federal states are the ones responsible for taking actions based on the Protection Against Infection Act, in particular quarantine orders, occupational bans and curfews. The individual federal states decide who the responsible authority in their respective state is. For North Rhine-Westphalia, the federal state where my university is located, the responsibilities are regulated in the ordinance on the regulation of responsibilities under the Protection Against Infection Act. This stipulates that different authorities are responsible for different measures. For example, the cities and municipalities and their respective local regulatory authorities are responsible for the measures of quarantine orders, occupational bans and curfews. This means that individual cities within the federal state sometimes put their own measures in place. The Protection Against Infection Act also empowers the federal states to issue their own regulations. In Germany, this option has been used quite frequently. In addition, the federal government and the federal states have concluded two agreements to ensure uniform regulations in all federal states. All 16 states have reacted to the agreements with corresponding regulations in so far as they had not already done so before. However, the respective state regulations still differ in many ways. In order to prevent the spread of dangerous diseases such as the coronavirus COVID-19, 
each federal state in Germany may restrict fundamental rights. The legal basis for the current measures is provided above all by the Protection Against Infection Act. This allows for various protective measures to combat epidemics, including measures that restrict the freedom of assembly and the inviolability of the home. It determines how and in which rights the state may intervene. Furthermore, based on Article 32 of the Protection Against Infection Act, the federal states can issue their own protective measures in the form of regulations, thereby also restricting fundamental rights. However, it is important to note that even in the current exceptional situation, the state may only interfere with our fundamental rights if this is proportionate. Thus, not all measures that are taken or could theoretically be taken to prevent infection are automatically lawful. For each individual measure taken, the interference with fundamental rights must be proportionate to the purpose it pursues. At present, the aim is to prevent the spread of COVID-19 virus and to protect the right of previously uninfected third parties to life and physical integrity. In general, the following applies. The more a measure would encroach on fundamental rights, the more promising and unavoidable it must be. And the objective of preventing the spread of a virus like COVID-19 must be pursued as far as possible by measures that restrict fundamental rights as little as possible. Therefore, it is always a matter of weighing up the legal interests involved. Infection protection measures encroach on many fundamental rights which are guaranteed in the German Basic Law. For example, the freedom of the person in regard to quarantine, physical integrity in regard to medical examinations and the secrecy of conversations by electronic means when written Messages from potentially infected people are read to trace them. In addition, the government can also restrict the freedom of movement, for example, by prohibiting people from leaving a certain area or forcing them to leave other areas. But also, given the high risk of infection by COVID-19 and the possible breakdown of the healthcare system, even restrictions of the freedom of assembly may be proportionate. Since the federal states considered it more important to take measures that are uniform as possible, there are now two agreements between the federal government and the 16 states. The first agreement of 16 March 2020 led to a drastic measure taken by all 16 federal states, such as closure of schools, daycare centers, clubs and retail outlets, with the exception of grocery stores, but also theaters and playgrounds and the prohibition of meetings in churches, mosques and synagogues. In the second agreement of 22nd March 2020, the federal and state governments agreed on even more far-reaching measures such as extensive contact restrictions. People were only permitted to be in public places alone together with another person or with members of their own household. Service providers, especially hairdressers, beauty saloons and tattoo studios who had so far been partially exempted from the ban also had to close. Medically necessary treatments continued to be possible. Restaurants and bars remained closed, but food and drinks could still be delivered or picked up. These rules applied for several weeks until the beginning of May 2020. Violations of these restrictions on access, contact and movement, which are defined in legal regulations as well as in general decrees by the federal states could be punished as an administrative offense or a criminal offense. Some states even issued
issued catalogs of fines. For example, in the state of North Rhine-Westphalia, the relevant public administrations were required to set fines at a minimum of 200 euros for anyone who did not comply with the contact restrictions. Anybody who repeatedly violated the ban on keeping business premises open was liable to fines of up to 25,000 euros. Failure to comply with the quarantine order or a prohibition to work is even a criminal offense, punishable by imprisonment for up to five years or a fine. In the arising public debate on the restrictive measures, the hardest measures are sometimes quasi-automatically seen as the most effective and therefore the only reasonable ones. Because being protected from the coronavirus is a matter of life and death, this can lead to the assumption that any restriction of fundamental rights in times of corona must be accepted. But that is not the case. First of all, the aim of fundamental rights is not only to protect us from state intervention. Fundamental rights also oblige the state to protect our rights. This is most clearly expressed in Article 1 of the German Basic Law. All state authority is obliged to respect and protect human dignity. That is why the state must protect the population from the coronavirus and cannot simply let the virus spread all across Germany. However, the right to life and physical integrity is not free of restrictions. The German Basic Law provides that the right to life can be encroached upon on the basis of a law and is therefore subject to a simple reservation of the law. Like all other fundamental rights, it must also be gently balanced with conflicting constitutional law in particular with other fundamental rights. The restrictions of freedom that have been enacted in Germany in times of Corona are problematic from two main points of view. First, many measures lack an explicit legal basis. Second, the proportionality of the measures is questionable. Let's start with the first problematic point, the legal basis of the measures. The governments use the Protection Against Infection Act as a basis for authorization. Under this act, various measures like quarantine can be taken if there is a concrete case of suspicion of infection. Even under the police and regulatory law of the federal states, which provides the legal basis for official measures to avert danger, a ban on entering certain places can only be imposed in specific individual cases. However, whole areas cannot be closed on the basis of these laws. Finally, certain measures can be taken under the civil protection law of the federal states if a disaster is declared. Curfews are not regulated there either. In the absence of a specific basis for intervention, the question arises as to whether curfews and contact restrictions can be based on a so-called general clause. That is a very generally formulated catch-all intervention norm. In the Protection Against Infection Act, there is a general clause for necessary protective measures. However, there are strong reasons why this general clause is not sufficient. In the case of such far-reaching encroachments on fundamental rights, as in times of Corona, a special legal basis with precise conditions is needed. In the case of a newly arising situation of danger. However, it is at least conceivable to base measures involving intensive intervention on general clauses. This can be justified at least for a limited period of time, as long as the legislature has not yet been able to react and create a sufficient legal basis. The idea behind this is that not acting would cause even
even deeper interventions in important protected rights, for example, because the health and lives of many people are threatened. Whether the rapid introduction of initial restrictions is necessary to avert such dangers must be answered by scientists, especially biologists and politicians. However, for such drastic measures, the legislator urgently needs to create a special legal basis for authorization. This has been done in Germany in the meantime, as the federal legislator has reacted and added a half sentence to the Protection Against Infection Act's general clause. This addition shall provide the legal basis for the far-reaching restrictions on movement that have come into force. However, it is highly questionable whether this half sentence satisfies the requirement that all substantial value-based decisions must be made by the German Parliament, the Bundestag. Restrictions of fundamental rights and freedoms are only justified if they are appropriate and necessary to achieve a legitimate purpose. Furthermore, they have to be proportionate. They are necessary if there is no milder means of achieving the same effect. However, the legal judgment on current and future encroachments on fundamental rights faces the same problem as politics. How can we know how many new daily infections our health system can withstand? And which measures would actually be most effective in containing the pandemic. In light of so much uncertainty, the law gives politicians a great deal of leeway. Even in the current crisis situation of Corona, the legal protection guaranteed under Article 19, fourth paragraph of the German Basic Law, is still valid. This means that everybody can always defend him or herself in court against regulations and measures of public authority, including measures to contain the spread of the coronavirus. And there have been many cases when German citizens went to court to challenge either legal regulations or enforceable measures which were taken due to corona. Let me give you two examples. The first case concerns the prohibition of demonstrations against corona restrictions in the state of Hesse. It was taken to the German Federal Constitutional Court by means of the interim relief as an urgent application. The city of Gießen prohibited two demonstrations in public, arguing that the corona regulation of the state of Hesse did generally not allow gatherings of more than two persons. The constitutional judges ruled that the regulation did not prohibit any assemblies in public in general. As the freedom of assembly being guaranteed in the German Basic Law is a highly protectable fundamental right, it cannot completely be abrogated. Instead, the competent authority must weigh the concrete circumstances of every single case to decide about the permission of any public assembly. If the assembly would take place under consideration of corona protection measures, such as sufficient distance and hygiene, it could be permitted at least under certain conditions. However, the competent authority still has discretion in its decision about the compatibility of the desired public assembly with the protection of the public security and order in times of high infection risks due to COVID-19. The second case concerns a regional corona protection regulation in the administrative district of the city of Gütersloh in the state of North Rhine-Westphalia. Due to a major corona outbreak in a huge meat factory in this district with more than 1,500 infected persons, a seven days lockdown for the entire district of Gütersloh was declared by the competent authorities and once prolonged for another seven days. The higher administrative court in Münster 
rule that the extension was unlawful because it violated the basic law's principle of proportionality and its non-discrimination precept. As the corona outbreak was mainly restricted to the employees of this meat factory, the extension of the lockdown for the whole district was not proportionate anymore. The public authorities were obliged to differentiate the need of protective measures in accordance with the infection rates and risks in smaller units of the whole district so that lockdowns were only proportionate in certain cities or villages inside the entire administrative district. And in addition to that, the court also obliged the public authorities to permanently review their restrictive measures as they mean an encroachment to fundamental rights which might not be proportionate anymore. As you can see, some time after the German people accepted the restrictive corona measures without contradiction as necessary, they started to stand up against these administrative measures before the courts. The people claimed unlawful restrictions of their fundamental rights. And the courts, even though they conceded discretion to the public authorities up to a certain extent, mostly decided in favor of the people, emphasizing the importance of the people's fundamental rights and enforcing the state and its institutions to protect these fundamental rights and to always act in accordance with the principle of proportionality, even in times of corona. As a next step, it would be interesting to see if and how the courts will also compensate the claimants who suffered from unlawful restrictions of their fundamental rights in times of corona. But these cases have not been ruled yet and could therefore be subject to another video of our Elpis Online Law Review. Thank you very much for listening. Take care and stay healthy. Choo!